Chicago was its backyard. By the time, in 1914, when Thomas Alva Edison came to this young man, he wanted him to record, uh, get out of his container, on a record, on his new event in the phonograph, his voice, on a record almost exactly like this, which was owned by a friend of mine, as a matter of fact, and Jay Marshall finally sold that to David Copperfield. Thank you, David Copperfield, for letting us use that this evening. So they moved to Appleton, Wisconsin, and then soon after that, the voice was heard around the world. Of course, he was already synonymous with magic, the great name Harry Houdini. By the time he came to Chicago, the Schubert Princess Theater, the venue in 1926, in the spring of 1926, this would be his longest run ever. To be one day, or two days, or a week in one location was a lot for Harry. To be two months in one location was something short of spectacular for him. Little did he know, or the public, that less than seven months later, Harry Houdini would die a tragic death on October 31st, 1926. His show that evening was divided into three separate parts magic, escapes, and this last segment was called Do the Dead Really Come Back? You see, Houdini was an ardent spiritualist. He believed in afterlife, but he was also spiritualism's greatest foe. Many of his friends, like Sir Arthur Conan Doyle of Sherlock Holmes, Bank, lost his entire fortune to fraudulent mediums. So Houdini spent his time debunking the frauds, the charlatans, the mediums, the psychics, those who said they could produce with oddball cameras, psychic plasma, echoplasma, and produce things onto boards. I asked somebody earlier this evening when I first came in, uh, are you out there, lady, uh, young lady? Gail, right? Gail. Hi, Gail. How are you? Good. Gail, you're our first helper this evening. I came to your table almost a half an hour ago, and I asked you to do me a favor. In your loudest voice, because you were seated at the table, would you tell everybody exactly what I had you do? You had me take a single $1 bill. Stop there. A single $1 bill. Did I see this dollar bill? Did you hide it from me? In other words, I asked you to do that. Yes. Am I correct? Yes. Good. This is important. I asked her to take any single out of her purse. And then what did you proceed to do after that? I took it out of my wallet. Yes. And you had given me some instructions on how to hold it. 
And so you fold it, correct? Many times. And then what, what did you do after that? You gave me a white, clean, white envelope. Yes. You asked me to put the dollar bill inside mm -hmm. the envelope. Yes. And you make me zip the envelope. <laughs> yes. Close. That's the sexual part of the evening. <laughs> She's all excited. Don't <laughs> Go ahead, Gail. And then from there, I proceeded to put it back into my I asked you to fold it and put it back in your purse, and then when I called for you, I would ask you to take it out of your purse, which you will do now, if you would please. Right now. Sit right where you are, you don't need to come up on stage. Houdini would play two months at the Schubert Princess Theater. For those of you who don't know where the Schubert Princess Theater was, it's now where the Federal Kaczynski Building is. It lived until 1943 as one of the premium houses to play in. It was a gorgeous house, and I'll tell you a little bit about this poster later. It is one of two existing posters in the entire world from the Schubert Princess Theater shows. Okay, you have the envelope? Would you show the envelope? Let everybody see. Is it still sealed? And it's still sealed. Very good. Let me move my microphone, and let me get a little something to write with. You know, no matter where Houdini traveled around the world, he always managed, especially when it was the time for his father's year site. He could be in Russia, he could be in Germany. He always found the synagogue, as he writes in his memoirs, so he could say Kaddish for his father. His father had a difficult life, because he was from the old Germanic version of Judaism, a very, very orthodox group. And when he moved to Appleton, Wisconsin, well, you know, Wisconsin. <laughs> they moved to Milwaukee, and Harry Houdini and his brother first performed at the Chicago World's Fair as the Houdini Brothers. I'd like you to open that envelope you went for the first time. There are some people around you, and I don't care if they look over your shoulder, but if you see anything, please don't yell it out, okay? Are you doing that for me? Good. Open up, take out its contents. Is the dollar still there? Yes. Just for the first time, would you unfold your dollar, please? And I need you to think of that dollar clearly. Look at it as a whole, if you would, please. So for almost 60 nights, Houdini would bring up a different... <laughs> he would bring up a different psychic or medium that agreed to appear on stage. These were the people who were taking people for their money. You're looking at the number now? Please do. Good. Very good. Yep. Yeah, I don't like that. And every night, every night, he would bring them up and they were supposed to replicate what they could do when people paid them money. But Houdini debunked every single one of them. Not one iota of evidence was ever found that these people could manifest the echoplasma, the floating bells, the voices, or the images of people. They could not do it on stage in a controlled environment. Please look at the date of that bill. It's really difficult. And by the end of those two months, every single person had been debunked. And Houdini proved beyond a shadow of a doubt that he could do exactly what they were doing by performance art, or as we know, as performance magic, stage magic. Gail, in a loud, clear voice, uh, this is just a guess, I'm not sure. In a loud, clear voice, for the first time, to this audience, as they've been listening to the story of Harry Houdini, Harry Houdini, would you please read the serial number of that bill out loud 
very succinctly and loudly. Stand up so everybody can hear you. I'm ready. Are you? Say that one more time. B O seven one zero 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 four three E. Pretty close. And it's got a B, that means it was from the city of New York. Give Gail a nice round of applause. Thank you, Harry Houdini. Don't be taken by Charlatan, ladies and gentlemen. It's not good. The story of this poster goes is this, about five years ago, my wife and I were traveling and I get a call from a well-known poster shop, and I collect posters, but he had, he collects high-end Bell Epoch posters and he had my name down, but I, if I told him, if you ever see anything from Magic, please call me. Well, he called me in excitement because he needed someone, someone to verify this poster. Why? Well, nobody had seen the image. So I had seen some of these images before on a similar banner that it was nine foot long. It was discovered by a Polish roofer with broken English who, when redoing a 1920s style bungalow in, on Addison near WGN Television, when he unroofed the roof, he found a hundred of these posters used as insulation in the rafters. Now the roof was so bad that bird excrement and other conditions from the weather had really soiled the posters bad. They were cut in half and thirds, so he threw them all out except for two. But even he knew he had a special find. And he was willing to sell not just one, but both of them, which I became the proud owner of. And if you looked a few weeks ago at the History Detectives on W, on uh, WTTW, PBS locally here. It was the subject of a history detective's session where they wanted to find out more about this poster in the Princess Theater. So that's the story of that. Give yourselves a good round of applause for being a good audience at Albany Gale. Thank you so much. And now, I need somebody in this audience. You know, I know almost everybody. And I must say, you've always, since my wife and I and Melissa have come into your family, you've really made us feel like family. And I, uh, you know, I work with him on Shabbos, and I'm going to ask him. He did not know I was going to pick him. Uh, Bill Gerber, would you stand up, please? A little nice applause for Bill. Thank you. Bill, I want to thank you for volunteering, okay? Just stay right there, though. If that falls over, let me know, would you please? I'm going to ask you to be the magician, Bill. Your chance to be the performer on stage, you do not have to call out one single solitary B-I-N-G-O. How lucky can you be? Bill, you are the magician. So I happen to have a deck of cards which I'd like you to hold on to. Do you mind? Can you use your imagination, Bill? Bill, are you there? I have a deck of cards right here, Bill. Use your imagination. Regress. Here we go. I'm going to toss the cards to you. And in great theatrical fashion, you're going to catch the deck of cards. Ready? Here we go. One, two, three. Very good, Bill. That was pretty good, actually. Yeah, they have size. They have weight. They have dimension. So what I'd like you to do with those cards, if you would, is shuffle them up nice and fancy. If you would, Bill. Go ahead. Shuffle them nice and fancy. Nice and fancy. To every Bill. Bill, that's pretty good. But it's a better trick if you take them out of the box first, okay? <laughs> no, I mean, well, he's new at this, folks. You shouldn't laugh at him. He's new at this, okay? Rich Newman got a big kick out of that. I love that. Okay. What I'd like you to do, is, have you done, taken them out of the box? Yes. Place the box somewhere. Don't lose it. Place it on the table or hand it something. Very good. Now, fan the cards out like a magician would. Face down. Very good. Would you walk over to the table next to you on your left? Yes, over there. And is there some, oh, there's a lady right there. What is your first name, ma'am? Ina. Ina, would you do me a favor? Would you select one of his cards, please? But Ina, be careful not to show it to me because I'm still facing. I'll turn my back, okay? Go ahead. 
Did, did you like that car, Ina, or do you want to take another one? That's good. Now, folks, for those of you who think Ina is strange, just remember who's holding the entire deck. I love you, Bill. Close the remainder of the cards, Bill. Turn them upside down so the cards are face up. You, you don't have to hurt yourself doing that. Just, just kind of, yeah, good. And now, your name was? Ina. I'm correct. Ina. Place the card back in the deck face down, okay? And Bill, you're going to get a nice round of applause by bringing the cards up on stage if you would, please. Oh, a little nicer round of applause. We've all been working hard this week. Basement's flooding, lots of water, lots of rain. I could not have predicted that. Would you bring them up on stage, please? Good, guys, they act like you don't trust me. <laughs> Bill, thank you for being up here. Appreciate it. Come over here, buddy. May I have the cards, please? I'm going to shuffle up the cards a little. Bill, may I have the box? You left it on the table. Would you, would you toss the box up to Bill, please? Whoever told me the box on the table. Would you just toss it up there, Bill? Catch it, Bill. Catch it. To toss it, please. Hey, but it's this. Let me take the box, place the cards on the box. I close the lip, come a little closer, Bill. Would you believe that I can actually make those cards materialize on my fingertips on the count of three? Do you believe? Say, I believe. I believe. Say with conviction. I believe. <laughs> if we can get the entire audience to count to three, you will believe, okay? Let's get the entire audience to count to three. One, two, three. <laughs> I heard one wow. <laughs> and uh, don't expect miracles, okay? <laughs> you selected a card, didn't you? Oh no, you had somebody select a card, did you? I know you're up here for another reason to be the eyes and ears for the audience. It's a deck of cards. Still closed. Ina, where are you? There you are. It's hard to see with the spotlight. I Ina, Ina, would you be kind enough, in a loud, clear voice, would you yell out the card that you selected? Yell it out loud so everybody can hear you nice and clearly. Go ahead. Seven of clubs. I'm sorry, Ina? Seven of clubs. Would you like to take another card? <laughs> Sweaty. Uh, I'm going to open this box so you can see it. If you take just one step forward, okay, just don't fall off the stage, okay? Good. Okay, I'm going to open this up. Seven of clubs. No shuffling. Hold on to the box. You're good at that. I will pair these cards so you can see them at face value. And Bill, since you are the only person up here, you are the eyes and ears of the audience. There is one card, and only one card that is upside down. Would you take it out? Would you share it with the audience, please? Seven of clubs. It is. <laughs> you know, that's the first time that trick ever worked. That's <laughs> yeah, true. Okay. Quite a lot of weather. Houdini's name would appear during his two months here every single day on the front page of the Chicago Tribune and the Chicago Daily News. It was the full page with pictures of him and usually the fraudulent psychic on stage at Maine News. In fact, soon after he finished his performances. In May, the first week of May, he went to Congress. He was asked to testify in front of a committee that was investigating whether or not spiritualism, believe in this or not, whether or not spiritualism should be deemed a religion, which would have given them all the benefits and discounts that we all enjoy in our synagogue, right? It never happened. He testified for two straight days, and it never passed because of him. This is today's Chicago Tribune newspaper. I'm going to step aside from the mic. And it is dated Sunday, July 24th. And I'm going to ask you each and every one of you to do me a favor. I'm off mic for the second. But I'm going to ask you to memorize a particular article or picture 
so that when you see it later, you'll be able to say, hey, that's my article, my picture. It could be a byline, a comic, something in uh, oh, color. Commit it to memory so that when you see it later, you'll be able to say, that's my picture, that's my article, that's the page. When someone, please yell out a page number. Two, thank you. It's very good. How did it go? Now, some people will actually say, it will appear that the magician is ripping this newspaper. See, I devised this method when I used to travel on the CTA going to and from work to take the paper every morning, but the Chicago Tribune is always the bigger, the bulkier newspaper, meaning, making it very difficult to carry. Now, some people will actually come up to me after the show and say, it even sounded as if the paper was newspaper. He was ripping. That's only the illusion. The more I rip the newspaper, the easier it is to place it in my briefcase and take it home for the return trip. Of course, you will notice that now being in pieces, it's even easier. All I had to do was find out my particular article or picture, and that would be it. Now, raise your hand if you remember a particular byline of the paper. Just raise your hand. Or do this by applause. Anybody remember a particular picture? By applause, so I can hear it. How many of you remember the entire Chicago Tribune newspaper? Try to do this. I don't know if this will work. I'm going to switch this on. Testing. Testing one, two. Oh, that works. Wow. Can you turn that down? It's just uh, uh, not my regular, not number two. Yeah, you got it? Good. That's good. I'm going to go out on the house and hopefully this won't be back. I'm going into the audience, right into the audience, which is something I never do during a stage show, and but I'm doing it tonight. I'm doing it tonight, and I'm going to do it with somebody who I have never met, or I don't recognize the face. Uh, Ma'am? Hi. How are you? What is your name? Barbara Black. Barbara, it's a pleasure to meet you. I'm Lee Levin. How are you? Good. I got this wonderful box made for us by artisans in Hanoi when we were there. I also brought a paper bag. I have a deck of cards. Now, this is hard for everybody to see. We're going to try to play this as big as we can. I brought a deck of cards, and you'll find out that it's not a complete deck of cards. I've never played with a complete deck of cards, that's true. <laughs> I'm going to ask you to take the cards, all of them. This time, you get to play with the cards. You don't have to match them. Shuffle them up nice and fancy. Mix them up thoroughly, if you would. Let the entire audience see what you are doing, if you can. She is shuffling them. Very good. The spotlight is on you. Very good. And if you don't mind, I'm just going to spread them on the table. Now, I'm going to ask you to do me a favor. I'd like you to select any particular card out of this deck, being careful that I don't see it, there are no reflections or mirrors or something, and feel free to change your mind two or three times so you know I'm not influencing your choice. Is that okay? Okay, go ahead. Wait, are you sure? Okay, don't look at it. Just slide it over. Don't look at it. Just go, did you look at it? Oh, well, All you have to do is your hands. I'll tell you. Uh, cover with both hands. I don't want to be accused of cheating. Okay? In a moment, in a, in a moment, I'm going to turn my back. I'm going to ask you, remember when we call these magic markers? I'd like you to take my shirt. And I want you to sign your name. Don't look at it yet because I'll be accused of cheating. Sign your name on the face of the card. That's the size of the pictures or numbers. Okay? And sign it real big so that when you see it later, you can say, that's my pictures. Ma'am, where are you going? I didn't leave when you came in. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> well, I'm 
God bless him, I love you. He said, he said, he said, very goodly, very good. Cover with both hands, let me see it. Did you cover with both hands? Did you sign it? You did. Now, I'm going to ask you to do me a favor, because I want the audience to be a part of this. I'm going to turn my back, I'm going to cover my eyes, okay? And I'd like you to show that to the audience. Don't yell out the card, please. Please, I'll cover my eyes, because I'll cover it. Show it to me. Don't yell out, I can't see it. If you do, you do. If you don't, you don't. You're just part of it. You have to believe that she wouldn't be dishonest. Place, place the card face down. That doesn't make you feel very comfortable here. Place your hands over the card, if you would, please. Good, I'm coming back. I'm going to break the deck right about there. Place your card right on top. Good. I'm going to shuffle these cards as best I can. Okay. Answer me truthfully, the bottom card of the five of hearts, was that your card? Yeah. It was not, because it has no signature on it. The ten of hearts, was that your card? Okay. Give me 50 more chances and we'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, yeah, you guys didn't know what you were paying for, did you? Huh? I understand, okay. I'm going to close this box right in front of you. If I can, my hands are a little sticky. And I have a paper bag. Would you open it up and check for trap doors? Check for anything that you might find there. What was your first name again? Barbara, turn out, please. This is an extremely dangerous... Hold on to the bag. Is it an empty bag? Good. This is an extremely dangerous trick. It uses a very sharp knife. Are you left-handed or right-hand? Good. With your right hand, with your right hand, hold on to the knife. The left hand holds on the right hand. Being careful not to thrust quickly forward. Because you've been doing something known throughout the entire North Shore as ritual circumcision. Uh, laugh. You don't laugh. Last time that happened to me, I couldn't walk or talk for almost a year. <laughs> you know, when I tell that at Christian fellowship meetings, it just doesn't go over the same. <laughs> now, that is an extremely sharp knife. Be careful, sir. Okay. Holding your legs is a good idea. At this point. <laughs> Hold it right here. Don't move it. It is a very sharp knife. It is a sharp, sir. It appears sharp, doesn't it? Yeah, good. It's an empty bag. The bag is empty. Please don't move that knife. And your card has been signed <laughs> and sealed someplace. Don't move that knife inside the box. I'm going to stab this as best I can. Once, twice, ow, three times. Barbara, the two hearts. You are a wonderful, wonderful, gracious audience. You can unfold your life now, sir. <laughs> and who wanted to bring children to this, right? Okay, anyways. I, uh, I thank you for helping me. I'm going to ask if somebody in this house happens to have a, um, let's see, like a $10 bill or a, a, a $50 or $100 bill would be good, too. Does somebody have something like that? Just pull it out. You'll get it back. I, we're insured. Ada, we are assured, are we? I'm uh, sure. What, what's that? Well, one's not big enough, sir. Uh, something bigger than that? Who's got the biggest bill here? You got a 10? Who's got a, who's got a 20? Anybody got 50? 100? Oh, 100! Hey! What is your name, sir? I don't want to know. That's right. A $100 bill, Jay. That's right. I'll stand over here now so the audience can see this. A $100 bill. I'm sorry, sir. So I work alone. I do my own lines, okay? What is this? It was Jay, right? Yeah. Houdini used to do all kinds of wonderful magic. Don't worry about it, folks. Don't worry about it at all. Jay, do you have another hundred? I know, Sai. So you have a dollar, don't you? Yeah, sure. Uh, just a one. Who's got a one? Anybody? Quick. The biggest of gets the word. Sai is getting his wallet out. Mark this down. Sai is getting his wallet out, everybody. Uh, I need a one. I need a one. Who's got a one? One. 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 Right over here. Good. Give me your one. Just give me one. Very good. Oh, good. Let me ask you a question. Hi, how are you? Can I ask you a question? Do you prefer big ones or small ones? Rabbi's wife, yeah, huh? You know the rabbi's wife talk. 
Fox, we listen, right? I'm sure. Hey, Mr. Smith, I've never seen one that big. <laughs> I love flavor. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, well, I know. I know. Probably something more like a, a little smaller like this, right? Yeah, but something like that would never hurt you. Just a tiny little one. Just, would you hold on to that for just a moment? That's enough. You know what I hate about this trick? That I have to leave the audience alone. And I'm obligated by magician's people to always return the money, and I always like to do that. And here's the dollar. Nice round of applause for our volunteers who did an absolutely wonderful job. Please give them a nice round of applause for doing a wonderful job there. Thank you very much, and Jay, I appreciate it. Thank you. Have a nice evening. I love that. Uh, I'm sorry. Oh. I made a mistake. I gave him the hundred. If you got the one, would you make sure you exchange it, please? Okay. I'm coming back on stage here. Oh, you know something? I need two gentlemen volunteers. Two gentlemen, just raise your hand. I need two gentlemen. Uh, I've got one here. Thank you. Uh, uh, let's see. And Dermot, come on up, team. Just give him a nice round. For those of you who do not know these gentlemen, I'll have, have them introduce themselves. My name is Ken Dermer. Hey. And you are, sir? George Budini. <laughs> With a wonderful Budapest accent. That will work. George Corbett. Thank you, George. We appreciate the two of you coming up here. Budini did Escapes, the middle part of the show. Of course, what you heard was his introduction to the Chinese water torture cell. We're not doing the Chinese water torture cell tonight, unfortunately, but if you don't mind, I need to take off my coat for this. And gentlemen, I happen to have a piece of rope here. So if you check that rope out, make sure there's no trap doors, check the end, make sure it doesn't come apart. Just give him a part of that, if you would, please. Go ahead, pull on it, I'll take it. Let me help you here in just a second. Thank you. I'm going to actually eat up myself. He said he was going to decuff himself. <laughs> Shelly, mark my words, he will regret that. <laughs> mark my words. Now, gentlemen, each will hold on the piece of the rope, please. Hold on tight, real tight, both hands in wood. Hold tight, make sure it is a solid piece of rope all the way. I appreciate it. Good. Don't hurt yourself. Now I'm going to ask you to do what Houdini would often do. I will tie the end to the need to hold on to the end of the rope. They're right there. Let me place my wrist inside the rope. And now, gentlemen, put a little string. Okay, gentlemen, would you pull the rope tight just to the point of inflicting pain? Pull. Pull. Oh, you're past the point. Oh, uh, you can pull a little more. I think a little more. And you notice, ladies and gentlemen, my hand is turning a very bright purple at this point. Drop the ropes, if you would, please. And George, would you walk behind me, please, and really grab hold of the end of the rope. <laughs> Boy, I really got to know you both. <laughs> you get me so nervous. <laughs> I really got to know you both very well. Take each end in one hand and tie it around my other wrist, please. Take an end in each hand and tie it around my wrist. Tight. I'll turn to the audience. Tight, very tight. Don't be afraid. Tight, tight, tight. Good. Now tie another knot on top of that, if you would, please. Securing the rope, make it tight. Are you satisfied that it's tight? Yes. So am I. <laughs> and, and would you check that real quick, please? Sir, would you come up here and verify that this is very tight? Would you just cover quickly, please? Please, it's really difficult. Thank you, sir. <laughs> I assure you, this is extremely tight. And usually, Houdini was under cover, but I'm going to ask you to do me a favor. There's another piece of rope there on that table. Would you just bring it right over here? <laughs> now, this rope is still 
still as tight as it was before. Shut up, Ken. Anyways, it's a tight pant tight. Tight. <laughs> now, Joker George, if you do me a favor, would you just give him an end of the rope? Would you just give him an end of the rope? And uh, I'm sorry, would you just slowly, slowly pick that up and do it, please. Okay? <laughs> Very tight, each of you. I'll move it myself, guys. That's all right. Would you tie that rope just as tightly around my ankles as you did around my hands, please? I have tightly right around. I tell you, they're a little confused. Let's give them a good round of applause for coming out. Do you happen to have the time on you by any chance? <laughs> George, you've been such a gentleman. Can I have something special for you up here? <laughs> George, George, what I don't want you to do is leave home without it. So if you come back here... <laughs> must have been a rough week. <laughs> Let's give George... Is this, wait, is this his? I'm not sure this is his. Oh, here it is. It says... George Houdini. Let's give him a good round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Houdini would affect all kinds of escapes, and Ken is going to help me with them right now. You'll see I have a rug here. The rug has a number of colors on it. A number of colors, shapes, objects, all kinds of things. And Ken, if you just stand behind the carpet here, right behind it, and I'd like you to describe to the audience the imagery that you actually see, if you would please. What, what, I, what I'd like you to do is actually get down on your knees if you would, please. Both of you if you could. And just, yeah, go ahead. And just describe it to the audience. Oh, with your hand here. I'll give you the mic. Yes. Hey, here. Describe it clearly. I'll be right back, folks, okay? It's a, like, kind of like a worship test with uh, orange and green and blue and red uh, triangles. A little louder! A little louder! Um, there is a large piece of. Uh, designed in the center, and then there are four that are around it. There, there are a couple on the side, and... You're done describing the design. <laughs> so you want to write, you want to write, you want to write the songs, you want to produce, you want to direct the porridge spiel, and then also star in it, huh? Okay. Uh -huh. This used to be called Lee's Revenge. That's right. Shelley's the insurance paid at home? Now, actually, this is the pillory escape that Houdini would do in front of a live audience. But Houdini would do it with a, a cover. The cover would totally hide his method of escape. But we're going to show it to you for the first time. It's an old escape, over 100 years old, and he will use the pillory. But your hands are naturally where they should be. It's easy to support your way through the button right here. Now don't press the button yet. And when you will see this happen, we will all count to three. And on the count of three, he will press the button on the pillory, and you will see the pillories spring open, allowing him to extricate his head. And he'll be free. And this is the way. So we can get everybody to count the three and allow their voice. Here we go. One, two, wait, hold on. Remember, don't press the button until three. Okay, here we go. Everybody, here we go. One, two, three. You know, sometimes it didn't work. Oh, well. I only know one way of extricating his head from this mess. I'll, I'll be right back. Excuse me. Extremely 
sharp stainless steel surgical blades here. Would you show everybody how sharp this blade is? I wouldn't do it to you twice, would I? Is it sharp? No, thank you. Over right there. Don't move. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to put Ken back together again. Would you like us to put Ken back together again? No! This reviews Ken. <laughs> you know, because I like the Dermer family, I will put you back into one piece. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll put him back in one piece. We'll give Ken Dermer a nice round of applause. I'll take you out of the stop. We'll give him a nice round of applause for coming up and helping he is still in one piece. Thank you. Other, we really appreciate it. Uh, why don't you take off your jacket and relax a while? Good, take your jacket. Beautiful. Gorgeous. I'm going to send this. Uh, will you have this out to be clean the press, please? Very good. This is a camera. We're going to do a photo opportunity. A blank board. Hopefully, the ectoplasma, the spirits of the night, and other room, the spirits of the night, <laughs> will create, help create what we're trying to do tonight. I'm not going to cut your head off. I, no, I saved that for Ken. Anyways. <laughs> but to get into the uh, turn of the century, that would be the 20th century. Well, I'm going to give you a little artisan's cake, if you don't mind. Dress you up a little. Dress you up, just like they would have in the tip of your leg. Figure taking photos was really art at the time. Look good. And oh. To cap this off with the Larson's cap for the little French beret. You have to put it on. Would you please? Put it on. He's putting it on. Wow. <laughs> See, I took off my clothes, I didn't get that applause. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> So, you are the photographer, the photographer for this. Your arts 
abound, and we are going to try to recreate what Houdini did on stage with the spiritualists by creating an ectoplasma gel-like substance that will, will create something on this blank part. So, in order to do that, you have to get into the camera. The cameras in those days were quite big, so if you'd be kind enough to uh, scooch behind the camera here, I'll bring this up a little more forward. Okay? Can you scooch behind the camera here? And you'll see it's got the lens and the, the plate, and I'll just cover you up here, make you nice and comfy. Good. Can you, can you hear me at least? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And here's the bulb to the, the camera. Very good. So ladies and gentlemen, we will take a picture. You need to get on your best smiles. For this, are you able to get a clear shot at this point, Ben? No. No. Oh, oh. Focus a little. I do that for a living with lenses, so it's good. Uh, can you see it now? No, it's darker. It's oh. <laughs> Forgive me. <laughs> it's the lens cap. The lens cap is glass. Into the audience, and maybe I can get somebody from the audience to help me out here. Okay? Just follow me. Right over here, right back here, ladies and gentlemen, right back here. I need a, a strong. Oh, you're strong, aren't you? You're a strong. Gentleman. Take this, please, and take off the lens cap. Just take off the lens cap. Just screw it. It's it's screw. Screw up. It's screw. Try hard. <laughs> try harder. 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 Here, back here. Back here. Come on. You try harder. How about you? <laughs> try harder. You can't do it. Okay, we need somebody that's obviously stronger and uh, can do this. Uh, oh, you, here. Would you be kind of... <laughs> what are you laughing for? Just, just, go ahead. Just, just, that's good. Oh. <laughs> So that's what was blocking that. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you for clearing that up. Hey, can you believe anybody ever made a living doing this? Well, I'm back on stage. I'm back on stage. And uh, in fact, I'm going to place the uh, clock. I'm going to place the lens back here. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to see if it's nice and clear now. Oh, there's something in the lens. Let me see if I can.
What a mess. Thank you, Ken. You can keep it for now, okay? Just have a drive through then send back later. It's not back yet. Take a seat. I mentioned it during uh, Shabbos on Saturday, that almost a month ago, uh, Carlos, Carlos, would you meet Judy Frank, Judy Breyer? Judy, thank you so much for having me here this evening. I really appreciate it. Would you, thank you. Would you join Carlos in the lobby, and I'll explain the rest of it. If you walk through the lobby, there was a box that has been locked up in the cabinet. We're about to uncover his secrets so that tomorrow you will be talking about it. She's going to go meet him. Carlos is unlocking the cabinet back there. And he will bring it out. It'll take a moment. And we'll see what we have. Are we getting close? They unlocked it. Somebody's telling me good. What, what's happening? Good. Don't bring it on stage. I have not touched it. What I'd like you to do is go somewhere in the house with it. Somewhere in the house. This was mailed officially by the United States Post Office Service. It was sealed by a place that you will learn of in a moment. Go further in the back, if you would. Maybe towards the middle. Pick out any lady and gentleman that could help you with that, if you would, please. It doesn't make a difference where it is. You, of your choice. Somebody who's adept at unwrapping packages. She's choosing wisely. Anybody? Way back there. Oh, good, 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 good. Oh, okay. is, is that Joel? Joel. Okay, Joel. Tell me what the box says. It says, do not open until asked to do so by magician Lee Levin on July 24th. 2011. We're here. This was mailed over three weeks ago after we got back from New York. I had something done. If somebody has a knife or something sharp that can help you open that box, would you do that right now? It has been sealed. It has not been touched by me or by anybody. When it was delivered to the office, the instructions were locked immediately in the showcase up in front. And explain, Joe, you're opening up. Joe, what do you see? The surgeon is working here. The surgeon is working. Very good. And, and Joel, yes. tell me when you've got the lid open. Almost there, doctor. Almost there. This is this is somewhat tedious, but very important. I've got the curtain open. You got it. What's in there? There are little foam pellets. Oh, I love foam pellets. Thank God Carlos gets to clean them up afterwards. But I don't have to touch them. That's right. Then there is a, uh, a container. A container. What do you see in the container? Can you make it out? Yes, inside the container is something wrapped in a wrappers from Brett Smith. Yes. Handmade Hearth Bakery. That's right. I had them bake this specially for us. It is kosher. And if you would, I think they've actually taped the top of that. It is completely sealed. Would you be kind enough to open it up? I need the doctor, I need the knife. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine if he was a mortal? <laughs> okay. Alright. Delicately, we're very, very And because people don't want to be here to next shot, so you can do this a little quicker, please. Yeah. Joel, I'm going to use that container later on. He's actually open. It's been taped shut. And he followed my directions to seal this completely. <laughs> Boy, this is really tough. I think I can use a blowtorch. Can somebody, can somebody help you? Oh, no, I'm really bleeding. If you need help, please, a couple people help him out. Quickly. Do not have to, it should, it should pop right open, please. The knife closed, I cut my head. It's just been taped shut. <laughs> I also want to acknowledge that uh, it's rare in all the years that I perform, because if you fit in the road, that I would have family members here. I want to acknowledge my mother, who's actually there. Hi, Mom. 
My sister, I live all the way from Dallas, my friend Neil. Thank you for being here to see my lovely wife, Elena, who I think we... Did you get it open? It's open! It's open. It's open. Okay, would you give it to Leslie to take it from you? Judy wants to bring it on stage for you. Please bring it on stage. You don't mind, do you, Judy? Judy, do you mind or do you want to pass it off to somebody else? That's fine. Okay, Judy's coming up on stage. Judy, don't forget, be there Sunday, August 21st. You okay? It's a little hard to see. It's nice and a little dark. Come over here. Okay. And Matt, I'm going to put you on my left side, if you would. Would you take out the contents? You can just throw this down for now. Would you unwrap that? So, she says, it smells like moldy challah. Well, if you've been in a box for four weeks like Houdini, why do you smell moldy mold, too? United Post Office, Post Office Service, so, and they x-ray everything. And, and would you take off the bag? And you'll notice that it's been wrapped by my instructor, so it wouldn't mold too bad. Uh, it will have some mold. Would you take off the plastic? Yeah, as best as you can. Yeah, I think it, it should come off pretty, pretty easily. It actually survived quite well. Well, it does have an interesting odor to it. And I think, let me see if I left it on the table. Carlos. <laughs> 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 I mean, I've seen the lost part of your hand. I'm trying to bring any, I didn't bring any wipes today. It's okay. I'll hold, hold it up here if you're please. I'll just hold it right. Do you mind if I break this open? No. Okay. I'm going to try to, and I want you to break it open more, okay? You break it open. I have them bake something into this bread, and it's a container. I don't know if you can reach inside, and inside, the, I don't want to touch it. Inside the container, there is something there. Would you be kind, do you see it? Yeah. Okay, you do. Inside, something was baked right in that. Would you kind of tip the finger in there? Stick a finger in there, if you would, please. Just a finger. Just slide that out. Just a little. Slide it out. The piece of paper. Just, just the paper. Just the paper. Just the paper. Just the paper. Yeah, that's a baking. Come on, you got it? Yeah. You did. Okay, now don't, don't, don't open the paper. That is really a key. Not too bad, though. It survived. I would eat it. I had sealed a prediction in that bread four weeks ago. Asked him to bake it in a special container that could survive the heat. And Judy, I'm going to ask you to come up to the front of this mic. In a moment, you're going to read what that says. But right now, I want to thank everybody for allowing me to come on stage and have a little chicanery, a lot of fun in honor of Houdini, especially in honor of Benjamin Cantor, Benjamin Warshawski. Thank you, buddy. We appreciate it. It's certainly been my pleasure. As I said at the beginning, we came here a few years ago, and you brought our entire family into your hearts. Well, you are forever in my heart and my family's hearts for making us feel so wonderfully warm and loved and nurtured. Judy, step up to the mic. And the very loud, clear voice the prediction that was sealed and cooked in that bread and sent through the United States Post Office Service. You opened it today. Would you please read it loud and clear? Campaign jackpot. Buddhist monks vanish amid sex abuse claims. Campaign jackpot. Buddhist monks vanish amid sex 